Good day everyone, my name is Daniel Maxwell. I am a descendant of the Maxwell clan and I'm very happy to share the story of the Maxwell Johnstone feud. And there are many tales that come from the old Scottish English border. Tales of kidnapping, tales of great horse races, tales of forays across the border to gain livestock and property that could be carried off. And many tales of clan feuds from the 1300s to the early 1600s, but none are so bloody or lasted longer than the Maxwell Johnstone feud. Clan Maxwell was one of the great riding families of Southwest Scotland. Clan Johnstone was their historic rival clan. Although all clans had long the border were a wild and woolly bunch, Clan Johnstone seemed to have been crueler than the others. Each clan sought to be the strongest force in southwestern Scotland. Clan Maxwell was mostly located in Nisdale and Clan Johnstone in the mountain area of Arundale. The Johnstone Ravers would raid the Maxwells in Nisdale and the residents of Nisdale would return the favour and raid the Johnstones in Allendale to regain their stolen livestock and property. Although most of the raving was across the border on England, the Johnstones continued to steal and pillage in the Maxwell territory, their fellow Scotsmen. The tension between the two clans and raids against each other had been taking place for about a hundred years when in 1593 a favourite member of Clan Johnstone called the Galliard coveted a fast black horse belonging to Clan Creighton of Sankahar Castle. The Galliard's attempt to steal the one black horse was thwarted when in the dark he jumped on the wrong horse and rode off on a black old blind nag. As allowed with the laws of the border, the raver was followed, overtaken by the Crichtons and was caught with a stolen horse within the 24 hour legal period. They hung the horse thief for his crime from a tree near where he was found. This angered Clan Johnstone, for the Galliard was a favourite of her clan and a relative of their laird. They rampaged through Nisdale, killing more than 12 men as a revenge for the legal hanging of the Galliard. About this time, Sir Johnstone called upon the laird of Clan, clan Scott to help him attack the Maxwells. They surprised a group of Maxwells at Loch Maiden. The Maxwells, including Robert Maxwell, the half-brother of Lord Maxwell, had taken refuge in Loch Maiden Church, which they defended for some time until the Johnstones burnt the church and everyone inside it. The combine, combined lairds of the clans in Nisdale petitioned King James VI of Scotland for punishment of Clan Johnstone. At this time, the current Lord John Maxwell, the eighth Lord Maxwell, had worked for many years to have peace between the Maxwells and Johnstones, but the King ordered Lord Maxwell in his position as Warden of the Western March to lead an expedition to punish the Johnstones. Reluctantly, Lord Maxwell assembled 2,000 armed horsemen late that year to ride against the Johnstones under the banner of the King of Scotland. Sir Johnstone was tipped off about the impending expedition. Legend has it that both Sir Johnstone and Lord Maxwell offered a land bounty for any who would bring the head or hand of the laird of the opposing clan. Sir Johnstone raised an army of about 800 to meet the oncoming forces. On December 6, 1593 near Lockerbie, at a place called Drive Sands, the Johnstones ambushed the advance vanguard of Lord Maxwell's army. Sir James Johnstone kept most of his men hidden and sent an armful of horsemen to provide the Maxwell vanguard and then retreat. When the vanguard broke ranks to pursue the Johnstone horsemen, Johnstone's hidden forces charged and caught the Maxwells off guard. It was disaster for Maxwell. As his terror-stricken troops fled into the main body of the army, creating chaos. The Johnstones savagely pursued their enemies into the streets of Lockerbie and into the water of Drife slaughtering some 700 and slashing others with downward sword strokes which caused gruesome facial wounds known as Lockerbie Licks. Lord Maxwell in full honour was knocked off his arse and surrounded by the Johnstones. Legend has it that when Sir Johnstone approached, Lord Maxwell held out his hand, palm up, recognising his defeat and requested mercy. It was the rule of the day, according to gentleman's honour, to hold the opposing lair for ransom if captured or trade him for other prisoners. However, Sir Johnstone drew out his sword and sliced Lord Maxwell's hand off and stabbed him, killing him. The Johnstones posted the severed hand of Lord Maxwell on the outer wall of their castle as a trophy and warning to others not to cross Clan Johnstone. King James VI pronounced Sir James Johnstone a rebel for his actions, but he managed to escape punishment and several years later remained loyal when the King needed his help along the border. Lord John Maxwell, the eldest son of the Lord Maxwell, killed at Drive Sands, became the next laird. He would not forgive the killing of his father and grew up leading many devastating raids against the Johnstones. Young Lord Maxwell's attacks on the Johnstones resulted in his being arrested 
and imprisoned in Edinburgh Castle multiple times. However, Lord Maxwell managed to escape each time and come into the king's good favour again. In 1608, the king wanted the two clans to reconcile their differences and have peace. An aged Sir James Johnstone met the new Lord Maxwell at a meeting, under trust, leaving swords and weapons behind. Each lad was allowed to bring only one clansman with him to the meeting. These two stood a ways back to give the chiefs a chance to speak privately. But the Maxwell clansmen began to argue with the Johnstone man and a commotion stirred up among the two. When Sir, James, when Sir Johnstone turned to break up the argument, Lord Maxwell drew out his pistol hidden under his cloak and shot Johnstone in the back with two poisoned bullets. Thus, Lord Maxwell exacted revenge for his father's death, but by killing Lord Johnstone under trust in that manner, he became an outlaw and had to flee Scotland. Lord Maxwell escaped to France, where he stayed until 1612, when he, thinking the king would forgive him yet again, returned to Scotland to request clemency. However, the king was not in a mood to forgive and forget, and so he refused to grant clemency and forgive his crimes. Lord Maxwell tried to escape, but was pursued by his enemies. Lord Maxwell was publicly beheaded in Edinburgh for the murder of Sir Johnstone. And that brought about the end of the long and bloody feud between the Maxwells and the Johnstones. I will now perform a ballad, Lord Maxwell's Last Good Night, which pertains to Lord John Maxwell in his final days in France before his return to an ultimate beheading in Edinburgh. Good my lord, will you stay then about my father's house? And walk into these gardens green In my arms I'll be embraced Ten thousand times I'll kiss your mouth Make sport and let's be merry I thank you lady for your kindness Trust me I may not stay with thee For I have killed the Laird Johnstone I care not for the feud My loyal art did still incline He caused my father's death By day and night I did pursue And all on him revenge to be Now I have gotten what I long sought Trust me I may not stay with thee do don't freeze my proper place. I do, I do care, love rock fair. I do my castle of the three and all my buildings there. I do lock May Ben's gate so fair and link home shake where the bird bobs bonny. I do my lady my only joy. Trust me, I may not stay with thee. Taken a good gold ring, where at hangs signets three. Says, Take you this, my own dear love, and I have mind of me. But if you have another lord, while well, I am o'er the sea, his life is but a three days lease. Trust me, I may not stay with thee. Was fair, the ship was clear, the good Lord went away. The most part of his friends were there to give him fair convoy. They ate the meat, they drank the wine, presenting in that good Lord's side. Now he is over the flood so grey. Lord Maxwell's taken his last good night.